There was a hundred things I could say, and yet there's not a lot to say. We got beat by a team that played better than we did. Got beat by a team that the coach, head coach coached better than I did. Uh, these two guys up here are giving me so many thrills and have taken me for so many unbelievable rides. That's the overwhelming feeling that I have right now. Uh, it's one of sorrow and sadness because we didn't play as well as we wanted to play. I didn't picture it ending like this. I pictured it ending with these guys having a huge smile on their face. Uh, but that's not college basketball. Um, I congratulate Billy and his club. I told him I was really for happy for him personally. Uh, and I meant that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, we had a difficult time. Uh, we went about a six minute stretch there where I was just figuring it up in the stat sheet. We were. 0 for 6 and 3 turnovers or 0 for 7 and 3 turnovers in a 6 minute stretch from like 11 minutes down to 11.37, 11.27 down to 6 something and uh, 5 to 6 minute stretch there that we weren't very good. And uh, then we were playing from behind and uh, I've done a poor job of uh, getting these guys in what they need to do at that point. So it's, uh, again, it's on me. But, you know, in coaching, you have some great, great moments. You have some tough ones. And these got two guys right here particularly been involved in some of the greatest moments I've ever had. And uh, right now, I'm uh, very appreciative for them. And I can't, uh, can't think of any time where I'm sadder. So uh, if you guys will ask questions to players first so they can hustle on back and get showered, uh, that'd be great. First question to our left, middle of the room. Again, please let us know it's, if it's for Joel or Theo. Um, it's actually for both. Um, Kiara Luck of Black Sports Online. As you guys know, fans are outpouring their love for you guys and thanking you for the years that you played. And Marcus Page just tweeted that, you know, he remembers you guys coming in as freshmen, dancing and yelling and arguing 24 7. And he thanked you guys for what you've done for UNC. What do you say to fans um, as your last? time playing ball for, for UNC? Joel. Um, I wish it wasn't my last time. Uh, I've had so much fun here, and I really felt like coming to North Carolina really turned my life around and changed me into a young man, and I think um, that's the most important thing. And just thinking about coming in freshman year and, you know, with a short haircut and not looking good on the court. Um, and then to now, I mean, I just got to thank my teammates and thank my coaches for believing in me and having the confidence in me. Um, and like I said, it's just been a lot of fun, but you know, everybody sees what happens on the court. But you know, the biggest thing for our program is to, well, for coaches to develop players and make and get the best out of them. But also at the same time, make sure that He's continuing the morals and values that our parents um, taught us when we were in high school. And that was the biggest thing that my mom wanted Coach to do. And I think that he, he did that for me. And so more than anything on the basketball court, um, I appreciate Coach for doing that. Theo. Um. Um, I don't really know what to say. Just. I didn't take any of this for granted. I came in every day with a smile on my face. I wanted everybody to have a smile on their face, even on the lowest of lows when we were going through stretches where we were losing. And I always came in and tried to be that spark as far as, far as that, putting a smile on everybody's faces. And I know we don't have that right now, but that's because these three up here were competitors. And But at the end of the day, I know Everybody knows me. I'm a. I'm always smiling and stuff, but like it's it's tough, but it's life. First row, right in front of us. Brett Freelander, North State Journal. Joel, you guys all got off to a strong start, and I believe it was up 20 to 13. What changed after that, and brought on the stretch that Coach was talking about? Yeah, uh, at the start of the game, I think we were getting to the basket. We were being aggressive. Um, and that's what we wanted to do. And then um, we just started settling for outside shots. And, 
you know, the three wasn't going in, but every time it's like we got the ball inside, uh, we were getting something productive. And then um, on the offensive end or on the defensive end for us, um, their big guys got going and, and it was just tough. It was tough to stop them, and um, and then we would they would score, and then we would go down and shoot an outside shot and miss, and then they'll come back down, get the ball inside, and shoot it right at the basket. So I think that we just stopped being aggressive um, after we got the lead, and that's why um, everything turned around. Second row to our right, uh, Roy. I apologize if this is repetitive. I'm just back from the locker room. Oh, okay. Uh, does it feel, guys, um, I was asking your teammates, they all said it feels w less like the end of a season and more like the end of a, an era with you guys walking out. Um, does it feel that way for you as well? Yeah. Um, it's just tough because me and Joel, we just, we're all, we're those type of guys that just try to bring joy to everybody. And we hope we did that. We tried. It wasn't like we was trying to. We were just being ourselves. I just want people to know that it's like. I hope nobody thinks this was an act. This is me. Like, I just want everybody to have a good time, enjoy the moment, and that's the. That's probably the main reason I'm not crying right now is because I've enjoyed every single moment I had with Coach Joel, and all my teammates in the past. Teammates in the locker room right now is just. That's the hardest thing. I can't. I won't be able to go get on a plane with them all the five hours to LA to, to spend more time with them. Like it's over. That's the toughest part. It's just, it's tough. To our right, standing. Right here. Uh, for Theo and Joel, uh, just in the locker room talking to Andrew and Brandon Robinson, Kenny and some of the guys, and they were talking about what they learned from you guys, seeing you kind of grow for some of them just one year, some two years, some three years, seeing you guys grow and develop to become what you were going into this weekend. Do you guys have an understanding of how much you've taught these other guys, how much you've passed on to them these last couple of years from work ethic to co competing and all that kind of stuff? Joel. Uh, for me personally, um, I've just tried to get them to understand that you got to put in the time and the work to be able to get what you want out of, out of being at this program. and. You know, it's hard coming in as a freshman and trying to adjust to being on your own and trying to um, just being away from home and learning how to be an adult. And it, not everyone can do that. And, um, you know, it's just you, you got a freshman year. I kind of took it for granted a little bit. But um, once I started realizing that I had to put in the time and started, and if it's what I love to do, I had to put in time for it. And um, that's when everything turned around for me. So hopefully, more than anything, um, I just hope I can leave for those guys that, you know, if they want to get the best out of what they want to do, you have to put in the time and the effort. And um, out of anything, that's what I want to leave here. And hopefully, they can, they can take that from me. Yeah. Yeah, I just, like I said before, Coach does a, like I said on senior night, he let me be me. He learned how to turn it up as far as when it's game time. I know time and place when I need to be serious and time where I can play around a little bit just to keep everybody loose. I mean, that's not – it hasn't been that way since I've been here. As y'all say, we always lose. The team is always loose. And then probably now y'all be like, were they too loose? But we won a national championship last year. We are probably the loosest we ever been. And then – I mean, it's just just have fun playing the game. I think that's the biggest thing. I'll try to teach the teach the younger guys just have fun playing the game and play for each other and just coach the staff. Okay, Joel, Theo, thank you. Congratulations on a great year and a great career. Thank you. Okay, questions for Coach. First one, middle of the room to our left. Hey, Coach. Uh, the attachment to players is beyond evident. Um, talk about how this program is bigger than basketball, um, because even if they graduate, they, you know, it seems they always gravi gravitate back towards, you know, Kendall's back and Sean May's back. It's evident that this program is much bigger than what's on this court. Can you talk about the bond that you build with these guys? 
Well, I hope it is. It's, that's my dream. That's my goal. The best time as a coach is when you see your players accomplish something that was uh, really difficult and to see the look on their faces. Uh, there's nothing better than that. Nobody's got any job anywhere, anytime that's better than the feeling I have at those moments. And uh, I do try to coach the game of basketball, but I do try to uh, tell them it, it's part of life, too. I told them it's the most inadequate feeling I've ever felt, and I feel it all the time, last game of the year. But I, I think I've felt it more today than any other time. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say that I love these kids. And uh, if you only had any idea <laughs> how much fun that they have been for me. And uh, three of the last four years have been very difficult. And those kids were my salvation. They really were. Things were not pleasant. I didn't like what people were saying to me. Uh, didn't like what they were saying about me. I didn't like getting a piece of mail that was addressed to Mr. Cheating Bastard. And so those kids in the court, on the court, excuse me, were my salvation. And uh, you have no idea uh, how much fun that was. And I don't want to be too dramatic, but uh, uh, that was hard for a long time there. And those kids uh, really, really made my day every day. And uh, I've been the luckiest man alive because I had kids that uh, made me feel like what I said was halfway important. And, uh, you know, and when I was a younger coach, I, you guys know me, shoot, I can cry at the drop of a handkerchief. I dropped it just a minute ago trying to wipe something away. I had a writer one time say that, you know, I guess we're going to get watch Roy cry today. And I'm not ashamed of it. But I'll tell you one thing. I told that sucker to tell me, tell me that to my, to my face. And he ran his ass out of the room quickly, too. So that doesn't bother me in the least bit. But uh, if you're coaching, you try to uh, give them something that can stick with them forever. And that's always been really important to me. It's corny, but that's always been really important. Back to the room. Coach, Evan West from NBC Charlotte. Yeah. How often do you think of retirement? The last 30 minutes. <laughs> You know, I don't do that, guys. It's I think about the next practice, the next game. One of my best friends in the world, Jerry Green, asked me when I was Coach Smith's assistant, what's your five-year plan, your ten-year plan? I said, I've never had one, never will have one. I try to coach and do the best I can today and hopefully get a chance to do the same thing again tomorrow. I realize I'm 67. I mean, you know, I can't run up and down the sidelines. I can't get out and demonstrate like I used to, and I wasn't a very good player. but. I could demonstrate what I wanted to. So, no, I I don't think about that. I think about jumping off the top of the building right now, but I don't think of retirement. Standing to our right. Coach, along the lines of what I asked Theo and Joel, how much satisfaction do you get out of watching two guys like that grow and mature and pass that on to the younger guys the way they were just talking about yeah. in the locker room? Well, I get satisfaction out of that, but I'd, I'd – I got a lot more satisfaction out of them talking about those things last year after we won two. Uh, but I want to give them some things. My high school coach told me, said, you give coach a guy and you can see some things you gave him 30 minutes later and it's your job to make sure it's something positive. You know, so that, that's, that's me. But uh, I have a desperate, probably not a good word, I have a desperate desire to win. And uh, to see the looks on their faces in that locker room as opposed to what I looked at a few moments ago. Back to the room right. Roy, how much did their zone, or why did their zone bother you so much? And when they, when they weren't in it in the second half, did that surprise you a little bit? Well, it bothered us a great deal, and I was surprised because we've handled some pretty good zones pretty well. And uh, uh, we've shot the ball really well. Uh, I've always talked to you guys about having great balance, and I thought that was the most important thing on the offensive end is being able to score inside and outside. We've been way too far to the perimeter shot. Every big game in the NCAA tournament, every game gets a little bigger. I mean, last year people thought it was an ugly game, and it was if you, the only thing you care about is a field goal percentage. But when you're playing for the national championship, there's a little pressure on the kids, and perhaps uh, my guys got a little more pressure today than I wanted them to have. 
because being a basketball player in North Carolina carries some responsibility with it. And uh, but no, you, you go back and look. I don't know that. I don't know that anybody's really hurt us with the zone, and we didn't change anything the last 48 hours. But when the shots didn't go in early, I I really jumped them at one point because God, we had never gotten the basketball inside, and you know, go one for 13 from three and. Uh, and then miss a wide open one to first or second possession, second half, and they make two of them, it's hard to keep the guys up. Back of the room, left standing. Roger Rubin from the field house. Roy, your last answer sort of gives me a couple of questions. The first one being, when you talk about the pressure that a Carolina basketball player is feeling today, are, are we talking about a pressure that comes from within, or are we talking about a pressure that came from Texas A&M? Oh, I was talking about pressure that comes from within. You know, if we lose two games, people jumping off the boat and think we're about to go wacko or something. Other, but we stay stay the course pretty much the whole time. But there is, I mean, if it's we've won, I like that pressure. People ask me, does it bother me? Hell, there's no person ever. My boss is sitting right down there, and Chancellor, if she's where she is, they've never put any pressure on me like I put on myself. So, no, I think it's uh, you feel a responsibility. I feel a. I feel a tremendous responsibility to be successful, yes, but I do it myself. In terms of the, the dynamics that affected the game today, did you see Texas A&M as, I mean, did you find that their size affected you? Well, you watched the game. I mean, they blocked 70,000 shots. Come on now. <laughs> uh, it was a more difficult game for us inside, which we knew. Uh, but, uh, you know, and let's not, let's make sure we don't do one thing. Let's just don't say that North Carolina screwed this up or North Carolina didn't do that. You know, Texas A&M is pretty doggone good. And, and they did some good things. And uh, they did what they did to us inside early in the game uh, shocked us, even though we knew they were good, because it shocked us because we weren't making the outside shot. And now all of a sudden, I felt like I had kids looking at the score more tonight than I've ever had kids in my life. Uh, but let's make sure that we give Texas A&M credit, too. Middle of the room in front of us. Just a follow up on that, Roy, it did feel like yesterday you saw a little bit of this coming in terms of the matchup for you guys and their size. I'm, I'm sure you take no solace in being right, but it did seem yeah. like their interior play got the best of you. Well, they did. You know, we've beaten up a lot of people over the years because that's been extremely important to us and it was tables were really reversed today because uh, we've been able to mask the problem all year long by making enough jump shots and getting to the free throw line doing some things. and. Uh, we weren't able to do that today. And uh, Joe, you've seen probably most of the games, if not all the games this year, I'd say it's probably the only game where somebody just dramatically handled us inside or maybe at a higher level. Uh, but they were good. I mean, I tried to recruit Tyler Davis early and uh, Robert Williams. I mean, nobody jumps any higher and blocks more shots than that guy does. And I still think that Garrison, Sterling, Huff, and Walker, those guys are going to be good players. I've said a couple of times the last couple of weeks that the kind of guys we have when they're juniors, sophomores, I'll say, because that means next year too, sophomores, juniors, seniors, they're able to handle some of the more gifted freshmen. Well, today they had guys that weren't gifted freshmen. I mean, Tyler and Robert have been around a while, but uh, you know, I think our guys are going to be good, but today was uh, a fear, you know, and I guess we've dodged it quite a bit all season long. Again, middle of the room. Coach, you, you play in a tough conference, one of the toughest conferences in America, and then last week you had a grueling week getting all the way to the championship game, and then you have to come back and do it again. Do you think that ever takes a toll on your team or maybe the teams in the conference based on what happened to Virginia and what happened to y'all today? You know, I don't know. It's it maybe because I'm not that deep a thinker, but uh, I didn't think we were had fresh attitude or fresh legs either one today. I told them I hate some things about summer basketball. I love other things because it gives kids a chance to be seen and I think they're far more positive than they are negative. But I watched a game one time where one of my guys that I eventually got made one of the stupidest blankety blank plays ever right before the end of the game they lose. And they come over and the coach says, all right guys, grab your stuff, we're on court three in one hour. You know, I don't like that because winning by God is important. And if you make mistakes, I want you to feel badly about it. So, you know, it's more teaching and training. But I did feel like, and we, one of the coaches even said they were acting like it's a summer league game. You know, well, we got another game, you know, in, in an hour or so. But uh, I don't have an answer for why uh, 
we didn't feel like we were at a high level physically. I don't have an answer for why we didn't feel like we were high level mentally. Uh, but I thought they had much more a workmanlike attitude than we did and really pretty early in the game. And that, I think that's my fault as a coach. Okay, Coach, thank you. Thank you, Gus.